This intro is exactly seven seconds long. Today, by popular demand, the video all of YouTube has been waiting for, what is the difference between wideband and narrowband? I will explain the difference between wideband and narrowband, and I will explain it in normal, regular English for everyone to understand. I will not try to impress you with a bunch of technical terms like some people always try to do, and I will actually demonstrate the difference between wideband and narrowband so that you can understand and see and hear the differences and understand them in practical, real-world terms. But more importantly, while doing all of this, I will not bore you to death. I might offend you. I might make you angry. I might even arouse you. But I will not bore you. But if you do get bored watching this video, please be sure to leave a comment to let everyone know that I have failed you. In this amazing world of the future in which we all live, Pretty much every GMRS radio is a wideband radio. And every GMRS repeater that I've ever seen or used or seen listed online also operates in wideband. Now, no doubt, some people will leave a comment to explain to us lesser smart people that GMRS channels 8 through 14 always operate in narrow band on a GMRS radio, but for the purposes of this video, that does not matter. I will be talking about the differences between wideband and narrow band, and most GMRS channels operate in wideband. Now, one very important word of warning, do not, do not confuse bandwidth, wideband or narrow band, do not confuse bandwidth with channel spacing, as many of the YouTube certified comment experts often do. Bandwidth and channel spacing are two very different things. Channel spacing is how far apart each channel is from each other. And bandwidth is the amount of frequencies that a channel occupies in the spectrum. A wider channel uses more frequencies in the spectrum and will allow the audio signal, the signal that you hear of the talking voice, the wider it is, it will allow that talking signal to go up and down higher. It will give it more room to deviate. Deviate, that's what the experts call it. But nobody cares. What that means is that a wider channel will usually result in better audio quality. And another point of clarification that many of the certified YouTube comment experts often get wrong is how the bandwidth affects the FARs. How wide or narrow your channel is does not significantly, if at all, affect how many FARs it can transmit. At least not in any way that any normal human being with normal ears using a normal radio would ever notice. Now allow me to quickly demonstrate the difference between wideband and narrowband visually so that your ocular balls can see the difference. This is the visual representation of GMRS channel 19. When I transmit in wideband, you can see my transmission in the yellow smears spreading across the frequencies. When I transmit in narrow band, you can see that the bright yellow smears don't stretch out across the frequencies quite as much. It is more narrow. So as you just saw, a wideband transmission is slightly more wide than a narrow band transmission. Now, because GMRS is intended by the FCC to be used in wideband, except for those few channels that I already mentioned, because of this, most radios transmit in wideband. But there are a few radio manufacturers out there that make their radios only transmit in narrow band. So what do you do if you have a narrow band radio and you crave to talk to somebody with a real radio that transmits and receives in wideband? In this situation, you just talk because a wideband radio is compatible with a narrow band radio. They can talk to each other just fine. But there will be some issues, some minor issues. And usually the weaker your signal is between the two radios or the more fars away you are from each other, 
the more pronounced those issues will become. Because a narrow band radio transmits a smaller, more narrow signal, and because a wide band radio is listening for a wider signal, the audio of the narrow band radio may sound lower when being received by the wider band radio. So the strength of the narrow band signal may be strong. It may be a strong signal, but because the allowable volume of the wide band radio is more, the volume will only be occupying roughly half of that space, so the volume will sound lower. Similarly, when the wide band radio is talking to the narrow band radio, because that volume range, that deviation, the signal going up and down from the highs to the lows, because it is wider on the narrow band radio, it may sound too loud or boomy or clippy. If you ever turn the volume up too high on your boom box and the music clipped or cut out, it might sound like that because there's too much volume trying to go into too small of a space. So as I've already mentioned, when you're talking from a wide band radio to a narrow band radio, you will still understand each other. And if you are close, you may not even notice the difference. But as the fars between you gets further and further and more and more, and as the signal becomes weaker, and as the static level becomes higher, you may begin to notice the issues more and more. And to help demonstrate this so that you can actually hear the difference with your own ear holes, I have asked my friend Chris to join us. Chris, as you all know, is the real star of this channel, the brains behind everything. Without him, nothing would happen. He basically tells me what to say and what videos to make. So please leave a comment below and let Chris know how much you enjoy his YouTube channel. So Chris is at home. 10 miles away, and I'm going to call him on my radio, which I currently have, which I currently have set to narrow band. So Chris will be talking on wide band, and I will be listening on narrow band. So you can see how that sounds. One very important note, I already called him off camera and we identified with our GMRS call signs. So all of the members of the FCC YouTube division don't need to leave a comment pointing out that we didn't use our call signs. We identify over the air for the FCC. We don't identify over YouTube for all the hall monitors to listen to. Chris530, do you copy? Give us a five count while you are on wideband and say hello to all of your adoring fans. Now it may be hard to hear over the YouTubes. He was very loud and very clear, but he was clipping. He was a little boomy. He, he sounded okay, but he clipped and was boomy. It didn't sound bad, but it didn't sound right. Okay, so now I have put my radio into wide band. Chris is on narrow band. We were using the repeater before so we could get a strong signal. Now we're gonna be talking simplex radio to radio. And because Chris is 10 fars away, the signal will be much weaker so that you can hear the difference in volume in his voice, especially in relation to the static that you will hear. Chris530, say hello to your fans again and give us a five count so we can hear how you sound when you're transmitting in the narrow bands. Now, I don't know how well this will come through the YouTubes, but his static was very high because he's many fars away, but his volume, his voice was much lower. I could barely hear him. I had the volume up almost all the way and I could still barely hear his voice. That is what happens when you transmit on a narrow band radio to a wide band radio. If we were both in narrow band, it would sound fine. If we're both in wide band, it would sound fine. The only issue, and it's a minor issue, is when one is in narrow band and the other is in wide band. Thank you, Chris, for helping us. Please say goodbye to all of your adoring fans. So as you could hear, it's not a huge issue talking between a wide band radio and a narrow band radio, but it does become more of an issue as the FARs increase or as the signal gets weaker because the static gets louder but the voice doesn't get louder. It also can become a problem if you're talking to multiple
people. Some people on wideband and some people on narrowband. Because the volume of the people on narrowband is generally lower, you'll have to raise your volume so that you can hear them better. Then when the guy with a real radio transmitting in wideband comes on, he's going to be much louder, you're going to have to turn the volume down. And the narrowbander comes on and you got to turn it up. And the wide band are cut up and down. It just, it is a pain in the bitch, but it's not the end of the world. So as you can see, there are some differences between wide band and narrow band, but they can easily be overcome with some persistence and patience. If you still have questions about the difference between wide band and narrow band, or if you got bored watching this video, or if you crave to see more Chris, leave a comment below.